internet, this is Chat Fangirl signing in, and today this is more of a confession vlog than anything else. Tomorrow I will enter the school that I've been in for four years, and I'm about to stay for another two years for my A-levels, and I'm going to take an envelope that tells me the result of 12 years of the British education that has had on me. Those letters that will be next to my subjects, it's scary to think that they will help define my life. And I am terrified of what they're going to say. I'll admit to anyone, I don't think I did well in my GCSEs. In fact, I'm almost 100% sure that I didn't do as well as everyone thinks I should have done in my GCSEs. Mainly because exams are hard for me. I, I can't remember doing much of my exams. I can't remember sitting most of my exams, which is kind of scary. But my friends have told me that I did show up and that I did, I did try my best. They said I was very nervous while I was waiting there, and it's not surprising that I can't remember it. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys a bit about my GCSE life. How before it was completely exam obsessed, what doing my GCSEs was actually like. And I think some of my best memories from my GCSEs are from my English and my science classes. Now, a lot of people don't like science. It's very academic. It's very knowledge based. But my set, I was in set one for my science. I took triple science, which means I get a GCSE and I had to take in all three of them. And I had to take nine subjects in total, nine subjects, nine exams in total. You can all see how well my English was going. Nine exams in total with C1, C2, C3, for example, instead of just C1 and C2. And the class that I was in, my science class, I honestly, I loved them all to pieces. I didn't talk to a lot of them. A lot of them probably don't even know my name, but I remember being sat in the classrooms and it was just amazing. The conversations that you could overhear are just completely amazing. You had this one table and this one table was some of the most argumentative people on earth. I'm not going to name any names because I'll get in trouble. But there was always a group of three or four of them and they'd always be debating something. There'd always be something worth talking about, always something challenging. And if I was ever feeling down, one of my favourite things to do in science class was to just sit there, draw on my arm and listen to these people talk. Because they didn't sound like kids. The people in this science set definitely didn't sound like kids. The way they were debating politics, it, it was really mesmerising to just sit there and watch all these words come out of a 16 year old girl's mouth. And I think that was one of the best parts. The people in my set didn't act their age. A lot, My set was very mature unless there was fire involved. And speaking of fire, I do believe that our science set not only managed to set a bin on fire, but I do believe we managed to burn a hole in one of the floors. <sighs> you know, top set troubles. Um, I can also remember we got told off for playing with the acids and there were fire lessons. And it was great. I loved that set. I loved the people in it. They were just amazing. But my English set was something else. My English set, my English set was special to me because of the five people that were in it. My friends. The friends in my English set were amazing. We had to do Shakespeare plays and there was, there was such a few amount of people that would actually sit there and talk that I eventually got guilt tripped into speaking with the class. And that was one of the best and worst things that's ever happened in my life. I remember I had to play Lady Macbeth and I was going to say Calpurnia, I did have to talk a lot about Calpurnia and not only was the speaking in class part hard, but if you got something wrong the class would laugh, but my friends in there that were with me would always, they would always be there, they would always support me, they would always bring, able to bring a smile to my face. Um, aside from my English and my sciences, I did take geography. And geography was a difficult subject for me, not so much as the material itself. I absolutely 
loved doing geography, I loved studying the landforms, didn't like rivers as much but I think that's because we spent a long time on it. Geography was difficult for me because, I want to say because of one person in my class, um, it's a long story with me and him but it, it made the entire class awkward. Um, I remember dreading double science, double science, double geography. Actually, double geography usually came after a science lesson. So that was fun. I'd always have like my science group and then I'd walk in there and it'd be like, oh, okay, I've got another hour of this. So aside from geography, which although I loved as a subject, I hate it as a class. Um, I did take Spanish. I'm failing Spanish, I'll be the first to admit that i nowhere near the grade that I was predicted, but that's more because of how our first teacher taught us than anything else. I don't want to blame everything on her because as a class we wasn't exactly the best behaved class, we was always messing around, I for one always had food in that class, I always had gum, I was always filling up my water bottle. It always felt like a class that I wouldn't take seriously and I never did. I don't know why I took a language, for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea, but I've never be I'm not a bilingual person, I can't I can't really study different languages and automatically know it as much as I would love to. I can't get my head round languages. But I think one of the worst subjects for me out of all of them was philosophy and ethics. Now philosophy and ethics shouldn't be called philosophy and ethics, philosophy and ethics should have just been called RS because that's all it was. When I first signed up I was expecting philosophers and how they changed the social fundamental rules of society, the how they shaped social dictations. No, I got, what does this religion think of this? What does this religion think of that? Why do I care? Don't get me wrong, if you've got a religion, if you're religious, if you believe in a higher power or something, good for you. I, I have no problem with religion. The only time I have a problem with religion is when they're forcing their beliefs down other people's throats. It's perfectly, I don't mind if you have a religion, I don't mind if you're religious, just don't expect me to just automatically convert. I'm not religious. I used to be. I used to be a Christian. Um, but I don't know. I don't quite know what I am now. I know I definitely don't believe in a God. But I don't know what religion I am. I think it's worth getting that out there. So to do RS for two years was kind of hard for me. Um, although I did learn, learn a lot. I learnt about different cultures and different aspects and I learnt different artworks. It was very fundamentally religion based and me and religion don't mix too well. I generally avoid religion if I can. But throughout all of them, I, I, I am going to miss my GCSE class. I remember my last science class I ever had was physics and I remember being sat next to this boy and the bell went and I just sat there and I stared at my piece of paper that I'd been writing all my GCSE notes on and he touched me on the shoulder and he went, are you okay? And it's like, that's the last class. That's the last class that I'm ever going to have with you guys. It's the last class that we're all going to be together. And for some reason, right then and there, it really hit me. Like, this was the end. It doesn't feel like the end. If you're about to start or you're in the middle of taking your GCSEs now, Time is going to go by so quickly. You are not going to know what happens. You're not going to know what hits you. It feels like two days ago I was just entering my GCSEs. I was just sitting down with like all my new pens and pencils and meeting the people around me for the first time. But no, it's, it's been two years. That's scary. Tomorrow I will get my results. I will make a video and tell you how my results go and how I plan to go on from there. But if you are taking your GCSEs, try to study little and often. It's something that I didn't do and it's something that I really regret. But enjoy your time. Take part in extra curriculum. Get to know the people around you because the time goes by so quick. But it's those people that are going to be there to support you. 
even if you are immensely unsociable like me, there will always be people out there that are willing to accept you and to help you for it all. I know I'm only top set mouse because this one boy who I was sat next to would come over to me and he'd sit there and he'd explain it all to me and I owe him a lot. Whatever grade I get, whatever grade I get in maths, it's because of that boy. So, this is just me writing on about my GCSEs. I've got loads more stories to tell, so let me know if you want to hear some of my random stories. But, for now, I think I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna sign out in a minute, because I'm actually scared of what tomorrow will bring. It really makes me nervous. But if you are taking your GCSEs, I wish you the best of luck. Even if you're not taking your GCSEs. If you're about to start a new education or if you're... Even if you're halfway through, I wish you the best of luck. And I don't care what it is you're doing. I do wish you the best of luck. I hope you guys are able to get what you deserve in your life. I hope you guys get to... I hope you guys get to accomplish your dreams. No matter what your grades tell you, you are special. There will always be people that care about you. Who cares if you didn't get the perfect grades? You are so much more than that. You are so much more than your grades. Don't give up your self-worth because of these. And I wish you all the best of luck. This is Trap Fangirl, signing out.